Good afternoon and welcome to Midweek Spiritual Nuggets from the Bethlehem and Faith Moravian congregations in the island of Barbados. I am the Reverend Rosalyn Hamlin, pastor of these two congregations, and I welcome you as you share with us via our Facebook pages and our YouTube channel, praying that you will be spiritually blessed as we look at nuggets of biblical truth from God's Word. Today, I welcome you from the Mount Tabor Moravian Church in the island of St. John, where our guest speaker, the Reverend Dr. Cicely Athel Horsford, is pastor. She will be sharing you, with you nuggets of truth from God's word today. And so we bid a special welcome to Reverend Cicely as she shares with us in today's program, giving you what God has laid on her heart as a means of inspiration for your soul today. And so we pray that you will be specially blessed as we share with you from the Mount Tabor Moravian Church and through the pastor of the Mount Tabor congregation. Welcome to you, Reverend Cicely. May God bless you as you share with us for Wednesday, March 24th. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it. Take from Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. The hymn verse reads, He shall come down like showers upon the fruitful earth, and love, joy, hope like flowers spring in his path to birth. Before him on the mountains shall peace the herald go, and righteousness in fountains from hill to valley flow. The doctrinal text is from 1 Corinthians 3, verses 22 to 23. All belong to you, and to you belong, and you belong to Christ. In him verse, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. And the prayer. Dear Jesus, how great it is to be loved by you. You have adopted us as your children, and we belong to you. You will never turn us away. May we always be faithful to you. Amen. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. It's a joy to be with you and to share in the share at this time. I'm going to use as our basis the watchword for the week. Psalm 51 and verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Let us pray. O oh God, we come before you, thanking you for the blessings and the goodness and mercies for this day. And now, God, as we come to this evening hour, we ask that you speak to us. Like the psalmist, we pray, create in us clean hearts, and renew the right spirit within us. Amen. Psalm 51 represents a painful experience of David. After David committed adultery with Bathsheba and arranged for her husband's death, the prophet Nathan visited David and told him a simple story about two men 
in one city. One was poor, the other was rich. The poor man treasured one small lamb that he had. When a traveler came to the city, the rich man took the poor man's lamb to feed the traveler, refusing to take one from his own flock. David was stirred by this story and he wanted revenge. I could see the anger now. Who wouldn't be? Courageously, Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. You can find that story in 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 7, indicating Naaman what he said to the king, David. David Penn, Psalm 51, out of that experience, with the deep consciousness of sin, he threw himself on, at God's mercy, pleading for his pardon. The psalm opens for us the possibilities of sin consciousness and the pathway to repentance. It reads, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquities, and cleanse me from my sins. Verses 1 and 2. The God to whom David cries is the same God that we just prayed to. This God is merciful and gracious. The psalmist, he knew the traits of a God's character, loving kindness and tender mercies. Verse 1, the, the, the traits of God's character. Though in destitution, sinners need to be aware of what kind of God they face. You, my brother, you, my sister, we need to know, we need to be aware of what kind of God we face. The second word for mercy or tender mercies comes from the Hebrew word meaning womb. It suggests that God's mercy is comparable to a woman's love. David described his sin with three different words. The sin to which he refers, transgressions, that means a willful revolt, iniquity, describes a twisting of God's ideal, sin means uh, to fall short of God's ideal. So the predicament of sinners is seen for those three angles. Transgression, iniquity, and sin. He says, How, according to your compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Here David is requiring, inquiring and asking for forgiveness. Forgiveness that he 
desires. Look at the words he used to describe the great desire for forgiveness. Blot out, wash me, and cleanse me. The psalmist cried out to God, for he knew that only God could deal with his sin problem. And I stop by to tell you this evening that only God, the God of the psalmist, the God who cares, he is the only God who can deal with our problems of sin. And verses 3 to 5 deals with the psalmist's confession. For I know my transgression and my sin is always before me. And against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in thy sight. The painful knowledge of sin. David was painfully aware of his sin and no one had to prove that he was a sinner. The fact of his sin haunted him and he wanted to confess to the Lord. He took personal responsibility for his sin in verse 4. David continually reiterated that the sin was his. He did not blame the culture of the times. He did not blame the attractiveness of Bathsheba or he did not blame God. David assumed personal responsibility for sin. And so this evening, right where you are, examine yourself as, as uh, the psalmist would have said. And then if we want to have God create in us clean hearts, we need to take responsibility for our sins. Take responsibility, personal responsibility for our sins. You see what David was saying in verses 5 and 6, that sin begets sins. In David's own experience, he confessed that one sin led to another. Man acts from an evil nature. And so David confessed that sin led nowhere except to more sin. You remember what he did. So he committed adultery. He slept with another man's wife. Then he got the man home and encouraged him to go sleep with his wife. And since the man did not do that, he ordered him back on the battlefield to be killed, to be murdered. Sin beget sin. Sin leads to more sin. And so verses 6 to 12 and where our watchword comes in deals with the cleansing. Cleansing. And so is where we are that we are asking God to create in us clean hearts. Cleansing involves deliverance from sin. 
And David found deliverance from his sin problem. He was purged and he was washed and he wanted God to hide his face from his sins. He wanted his iniquities blotted out. Create in me a clean heart. Creation of a new heart means that only God can do that. You see, cleansing involve a total new creation. And the word create in verse 10 of our watchword is used in scripture only to describe the work of God. Only God can genuinely cleanse sin. The restoration comes after he has cleansed us. One of the great, greatest benefits for David and for us is that the joy of knowing that we are forgiven and we have that peace make me to hear joy and gladness david wrote god's spirit is the source of a right and willing spirit as i close david plead for pardon from a merciful god David plead for pardon from a merciful God. And he begged God to create in him a clean heart. He experienced God's forgiveness all around us. People are searching for a pardon. People are searching for forgiveness. We ourselves are searching and wish to be assured that God can forgive us of our sins. We need to take responsibility for our sins personally. We need to confess them to God. We need to ask for his forgiveness and by faith receive that forgiveness, that pardon and hear the joy of God, the peace that surpasses all understanding into our lives again. We need to share with those people we encounter the message of Psalm 51, that everyone can receive God's forgiveness. May God help us as we act. Admit that we have sinned. Confess our sins. Turn from our sins receive God's forgiveness and enjoy God's pardon. Amen. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for the assurance of your forgiveness. We now ask you to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and make us whole in the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much for sharing with us in uh, today's Midweek Spiritual Nuggets. Special thanks to Reverend Sisley, who brought us those nuggets of biblical truth from God's Word as our special guest today. We remind you that all of our sanctuaries across the island of Barbados in the Moravian Church, will be open 
for in-person worship on this Sunday coming, Palm Sunday. And we do invite you to carry along your palms so that even though a procession may not be possible, we may still be able to wave those palms and decorate the church. We also invite you to join with Bethlehem and Faith Congregations tonight in our Lenten midweek service as we continue the journey with Jesus. Tonight's service will focus on the theme, Jesus the Healer. And leading that word of reflection will be Sister Diana Yard, a member of the Bethlehem congregation. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of Jesus. Amen.